Good morning, good morning. It's uh, 2.24 a.m. Monday, May 4th, 2020. I'm on my way to the gym right now. I was thinking about something as I was getting ready this morning. It, it, I'll give you the I'll give you the 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 abbreviated version before I tell you how or how I was able to construct this. And I was thinking about one how we go through things in life. We go through things. We go through, meaning we come out on the other end. We done. It's a tunnel tunnel ends, we come out, emerge into the sunlight, we go through things. And I remember, <coughs> I remember so weird, it was a point in time, it seemed like I was always getting pulled over, or I was always having some weird interaction with the police. I remember one time, I was dating this, I was dating this, this, this girl, and I remember I would got all the way, I would got, you know, it's my house, and I would got pulled over. And I remember, I remember the cop asking me for all my information. I, you know, I had everything, and I had this, that, this, that, driver's license, insurance, this is where you live at. Um, why does your ID look different than, than your address? And I explained to him it was another house that I had. And um, eventually I had to ask him, could you, could you please leave? You're in front of my house. I don't want my neighbors to see this. Or I'd be on the freeway and I'd get pulled over. I remember one time I was doing laundry I was living, it was before I had bought my first house, I was living in these weekly apartments. And I had to, there was no laundry room there. You, there was no laundry room there, so you had to leave go, to go do your laundry. And I remember one time I was going to do my laundry. I was living in this place for about a month, maybe a month, waiting on the process for my home to, to finish. <laughs> And I remember, I went to go do my, it was like a Saturday morning. I'll tell you what's so funny about it. I went to go do my laundry and I remember not even 10 minutes out the door, I got pulled over. And the police officer said that there was some type of ticket that I hadn't cleaned up. And they let me get my laundry out they took my car, they put it on a flatbed, and I was just sitting there on the side of the curb with my laundry. I had to call somebody to come get me. I remember, because it took me about, God is my witness, it took me about 30 minutes to get my car back. I went to the courthouse, which was 10 minutes, 15 minutes from where I was at. I, I fixed whatever they said I need to fix, and then I made it to their tow yard just as they were dropping my car, and I got in my car and took off. <laughs> But I remember always having some type of interaction with police officers, always being pulled over, just always something inconvenient. Just completely, just, you know, just completely and uh, a disturbance to my life, a disturbance to my time. Just a complete waste of time and you know who wants to go through that even if it is well you have your license you have your insurance all right have a wonderful day go all about your business who wants to be pulled over who wants to be stopped who wants to even go through that and I was constantly going through that and I was thinking how I no longer I, I can't even remember the last time I got pulled over by the police while in my car. I can't even remember the last time, well, I do remember the last time they came to my house. They came to my house because uh, somebody tried to break in my house. So, you know, me and my wife came back from where we were. We noticed that somebody had tried to jimmy open our door with a, looked like a crowbar.
but that was it. That was the last time. And I just don't have those interactions. Now fast forward. I was looking at this chart. It's called Matt. It's called Matt Manslow's hierarchy of needs, and it had five levels, five rungs. And basically, what it was saying is, when you elevate, you get to a certain point. Down here is basic needs, emotional needs, physical needs mental needs and as each one of those needs becomes sufficient and you are fed you have what you need in that area you graduate to the next level but when you look at it what happens is it gives you the it gives you the ability to identify where you're at. And if you can identify where you're at, then you can have a better understanding about why you haven't moved forward. What is it that you're missing? You missing love, companionship, knowledge, wisdom. What is it that you're missing that has you repeating this again and again? Same thing with the interaction with the police officers. I wasn't living my I wasn't living my life the way that I should have. So these things were constantly coming in my life. And what I was thinking about, not just the fact of police officer interaction, not just the fact of Manslow's hierarchy of needs, but I was thinking, how many times have we repeated something? Over and over and over and over again, and we failed to identify why do we keep repeating this? And the only thing I could think of in terms of why we repeat something is because we haven't learned. I mean, can you tell me another reason why you repeat the third grade? why you have to take the bar exam again. Can you tell me why you have to repeat or do something again and again? I mean, it's very simple. You haven't passed the test. So when I sit there and I think about my hierarchy of needs, where I'm at in life, what test I've passed, what test I need to pass, where I failed. It allows me to see how far I've come or how far I need to go. And I've even ran the same simulator with my marriage. I've ran the simulator with my finances. I've ran the simulator with my business. I've ran the same exact simulator of hierarchy of needs. I've ran the same simulator with regards to um, And I've ran these same simulators and I've been able to come to the conclusion. Once you understand what it is that you need to do, it's real easy to not have to repeat that course again. You're only repeating things 
because you haven't learned. And I'll leave you with this. God talks to you in these very subtle, jeez, it's so subtle. But boy, it sounds like a megaphone. It's so subtle, but it nudges you so hard. It's like a it's like a dog's nose. You know, when they want something, you know, they're subtle, but they can nudge you in a way that it, it pushes you and it and, and it gets your attention. It's sometimes so annoying. That you're like, okay, I got it. You want me to open up the door so you can go use the restroom, right? That nudge. And we're so disobedient to that nudge. Not because we don't think it'll work. We're disobedient because we're not used to following that voice anyways. So because we're not used to following the voice or taking a cue from the nudge that we failed to do anything and we find ourselves repeating the same course over and over and over and over again simply because we're unwilling to do what we're supposed to do, period.